think she's still down there. We'll call the meeting to order for Wicomico County Council, a uh, uh, special uh, legislative work session for May 24th, 2023. The uh, topics on the agenda will be uh, the fiscal year 24 budget. And we have different items that we, that the council has expressed concerns about. I think the, the overall uh, issue today is gonna be the fact that it's been expressed by many council members that they'd like to see uh, some cuts made to allow for a recommendation to the executive's office to give additional increases to uh, the employees. Uh, the employees were, were at a 3% increase. We felt maybe uh, more was, could be uh, afforded and was probably more than necessary. So that's gonna be the topic. So in light of the fact that I'm assuming everyone is in agreement with trying to find more ways to cut certain areas to allow for that recommendation to move forward, I guess we would open the floor for... Um, uh, yes. Before we do that, we have Tri-County Council here. Okay, we can do that. Um, yeah, we, we can certainly do that. Um, if, you would, if you wanna go ahead and have them here, that'd be great. So one of the items on the agenda is the Tri-County Council, of course. Gentlemen, how are you? Very good, thank you, Mr. Well, President. I know uh, there was a, a schedule conflict the last time when we were gonna have you in for a budget session. We appreciate you taking the time to come back. And uh, please, uh, the privilege is ours. Thank you for uh, making time to have us back in. Mm -hmm. um, and first of all, I want to apologize for that. That's okay, that's quite all right. Um, there was, uh, oh yes, if you could, uh, for the public, let us know if you can state your name and your position, your title. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Greg Padgham, Executive Director of the Tri-County Council for the Lower Eastern Shore of Maryland. Andrew Wild, Director of Shore Transit. Good to have you here. Um, uh, Greg, I'll let you gentlemen have the mm -hmm. floor. Go ahead. I have, unless, if the, uh, if the council does not have it, I have a copy of the uh, request for um, funding that was sent out on 16th of February. You do have a copy yeah, of it. Mrs. Hurley has supplied it. <laughs> yes, very let's, good. Let's, let's, let's mm -hmm. So what, we, uh, what we've come here today to do is to supply you with additional information. Uh, though you are members of the Tri-County Council itself and some of you are members of the Executive Committee and we do go over our budget, uh, this specifically deals with transit for Wicomico County and uh, because transit is a somewhat complicated thing, we thought the, it would be good if we could answer any questions you might have as you're making your deliberations uh, for your budget. Um, is there in any one particular thing that you were concerned about from the letter? Josh? I'll just jump in, I guess, the, um, the, I know there's questions about match from different counties uh, and who is putting forward what. Mm -hmm. um, I know we were looking, we we're gonna reach out to them. Do we ever get clarity on? Yeah, we um, did. So I spoke to, um, actually via email, um, Doug Jones from Somerset County and Weston Young from Worcester County. Um, it's my understanding that Worcester County doesn't have a problem with providing the extra funding, but Somerset County said no, they were not going to. If I may ask, uh, when you say extra funding, are you talking about the additional funding that would be necessary in the event that we receive uh, funding, additional funding from the Federal um, uh, Transit Administration uh, under the new uh, formulas? Yes. Okay, specifically. All right, very good. So how does that work um, due, to the, due to the fact that we're supposed to be, we're not equal, um, I guess it's based um, possibly on population or area served or miles run or something about the amount of um, funding that we do give. So how does that work if um, Somerset doesn't, doesn't contribute that extra funding? Thank you for your question, uh, Councilman Holloman. Holloway. Uh, Holloway, I'm sorry. Uh, the original breakdown with regard to the contribution from each county was based upon a study from Beacon, from Salisbury University some years ago, uh, and recommendation from members of the community is based largely on population and use. Uh, Wicomico County is approximately 50% of the three county area in population and approximately 50% of use of transit resources. 
So, with that, do you have anything you would uh, like to add to that, Andy? Perhaps uh, with regard to whether or not, if uh, if uh, Somerset does not make a full contribution, if I may, mm -hmm. if I could go back to the proposed change in funding methodology, that additional request is for an obligated funds not to provide those funds. So it is in the event that we are able to leverage the additional, and it is proposed at $1.7 million. We should know something the end of this month. However, with the debt ceiling issue, there seems to be some question mark, and there's a bit of posturing about how long this is going to take, and it could be a phased approach. So what we are asking for in the addition to is, is the obligation, and then of course, how how you would choose to, whether you would choose to actually fund it at the time we were able to use that would certainly, however that you chose to do that. Uh, what is important right now, the way that we get funded, and I'll try to be very brief, the way that we get funded <clears throat> is, is federal grants and, and one state support in Wicomico. And that funding has been relatively flat since 2009 to 2011, plus or minus a few hundred thousand dollars and costs have gone up significantly, we have been able to leverage those funds. One of the ways that Somerset is able to, because of course they are the poorest county in, in uh, Maryland and the lowest population in the three of the three counties, they utilize uh, part of the, it's called a JARC grant. And that is a specific grant. It provides about $1.6 million and it is a, it's a reverse commute grant and when we glued all the transit agencies in the three counties together to create shore transit, they also glued that those small pots of money into a large pot of money. And a small amount of that money uh, is allocated because Somerset helps with that. So some of their monies go towards their local match. And if they chose not to local match, if they cho chose not to match the additional funding, we would continue to do as we have been when there are not full local matches. We would try to utilize some of our other funding streams, but they're pretty limited as to how we do that. We, so you're saying you would use some of our funding to serve Somerset, Somerset we County? We would use some of the funding. We have, a, we have some specific areas that we're able to pull some money from. We have a, we have a, have to be very careful, there's law, laws and requirements about this. So we do a fixed route that is called a sponsored route for the Salisbury University. We would not normally run that route because it doesn't have enough public support. However, there are thousands of kids that use it every day and we do make it available to the public and have public stops. We can use that money because, because it is not federally funded. We are allowed to use that as match. I'm not, for instance, I'm not allowed to use fares as match, we're restricted from that. It's it's a really challenging quagmire. It's, it's a contract we have with the Sol with Salisbury University, in which funds are paid to us through that contract for providing that support for putting a public route in that area. So, speaking of fares, um, have you increased your fares in the past year, year, two years, three years? Um, we. We have increased them. The, the amount that we can increase them by is restricted. It, we have to, um, Andy, I'll let you go into more, uh, more detail, but we have to negotiate this essentially with Maryland Transit Administration. So at this point in time, fares, fares are a benefit to us. If we are actually, if we actually bring back to a, to a, um, a balanced budget, then increasing fares goes against uh, what we get from from the grant. So right now it is a benefit. Uh, what it is definitely is an absolute financial hardship to the people that use our service. Is it a method to increase funds? It is. Is it incredibly impactful? Yes. Well, that said, it's incredibly impactful for anybody at the gas pumps that's buying gasoline these days. I just, it's gone up. 20 cents in the past couple weeks around Salisbury. So everybody that uses transportation, private transportation, companies, citizens are paying more also. So strategically it is it is part of the, right now we are proposing some service changes that bring us 
that will bring us very close. We've done a lot of internal work to streamline some things and try to be efficient. But at the end of the day, agreed. Second phase includes finding a dollar amount that will um, balance out with the ability of our people to pay and bring in some extra funds. So it is on the table, it is discussed on the table, and we are hopeful that some of the other things that we can do will keep us from doing that and reducing more service, which is challenging. Questions from anyone? Yeah, Andrew, I know that you've been doing a very good job of trying to cut the costs in every every possible aspect. I mean, we uh, we attend those meetings. I know Jeff does. I know James has and, and Josh, uh, for the most part. Um, and we witness your testimony when you're, you're explaining the budget and the fact that um, you're doing everything you can um, to try to limit the waste that you have in those different and it's 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 very difficult job trying to coordinate all that at the same time but i i, I, I do appreciate what you have been doing thank you sir mm -hmm. mr president i do have one question if sure. you don't mind um i know that you mentioned like the um debt ceiling might be an issue as far as getting the extra funding through this grant um so the chances that it would be less than you know what you have indicated in your letter um, that would mean the local match amount would then go down, correct? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to verify that. I think some of the angst in this is the fact that we're really not sure what the benefit is for the for the increase in expense. I, I get the fact that you're saying, well, you know, the 306, that's necessary in order for us to be able to get that 306 of money from the federal government. But I guess it comes down to the real question, what increases in benefits do we actually see? Um, it's been very good by the fact that I think we've narrowed the logistics down to a real fine-tuned machine. So the question might be, is there a need to expand it and open it all back up again? Um, you know, when the federal government, as they do so often, they, they wave that cash in front of you and say, hey, you might get more, but you'll have to spend more. So I'm just curious as to if there's any idea of what the increased expenses, what benefits that might bring. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, that's what I spend my day on. Um, what it is is not quick. Like, it's not quick. Mm -hmm. What I would, what I am asking for is for your support, is for your financial support while we do, while we streamline internally, while we do the best job we can for the, for the low costs, while we reduce service in order to bring things back in line and make sure we are regulatorily compliant, and then put us back on the right path in fiscal responsibility, and then we do a better job. And the way that we are going to identify doing a better job, I have not heard about the grant, but I understand from MTA we have the strongest application for the areas of persistent poverty grant that they have seen recently. So she is very confident that we will receive that, I hope. It's about $360,000 for a comprehensive study of the three county area, but it also focuses on our healthcare systems, our dialysis centers, and our non-emergency medical transportation, as well as, as well as modernizing transit for the needs of the public post-pandemic. So full funding lets me get back on my feet and then figure out how to do a better job with the money we're doing and better meet the needs, especially the people that we aren't reaching, that we're not capturing, and reducing duplication of efforts and unnecessary transportation. Uh, we began when, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no go ahead. I, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, uh, the Tri-County Council began about nine months ago when the previous Director of Transit uh, retired uh, that we would, uh, it was an opportunity to begin a real long-term strategic plan, and that's what we've been involved in for the last nine or ten months now. The type of adjustments that we will be making, we've made some, but the type of adjustments that we will be making have not yet come to fruition. We hope to receive the funding for the uh, uh, grant from the, from the grant for the uh, feasibility study that Andy has just spoken about as well as some of the changes that we would implement and which will be announced and will be discussed. They've already been announced on some level, but will be discussed at the two public hearings on the 30th of May. So we're just getting started on this, uh, and this we have some breathing room uh, 
because we have some care funds still left that we can make up some of these matches with. We do have that, but what we'd like to do is get in line before that is gone so that we're not in a situation in which uh, we're burning through a million dollars a year deficit. That's essentially what we've been doing. Is that correct, Andy? How, um, how much um, COVID money do you have left? Well, that's, uh, that's the CARES money. What is the amount that we have left at this point? I'm not there sure. There's no direct answer to that. I don't know. The, the number that was given to us is about $4 million. It's just under four. And we have, and we have either spent or obligated that uh, uh, more than half of it through, through FY23. So we have the remaining, and it's ARPA money, but there is, uh, there was an email today that suggested that they might claw that back. And we aren't, and if they do, then that's that's lost, and we will not be able to obligate it. And obligate, and it transitions from we have to transition from federal money into a way that we can reuse local match. It's a, it's a fairly complex financial thing, but the numbers still match the same. So there's there's going to be about two million dollars left over that is in a reserve fund that we do draw from and utilize, and it's um, hopefully will not be pulled back for the debt ceiling. The service that we've been providing has been running on the on the over match, more match than the the local match required, and COVID funds helped to have helped to do that. So, you're under the assumption that it may get pulled back, or you can spend it this year. We are not going to be able to spend that two million dollars this year. We will not be able to. So, what do you do when it runs out eventually? What do you do for funding if you're using that money? I mean, this is a problem that I think a lot of <coughs> government organizations has had. Mm -hmm. They've been getting COVID money. They've been propping their budgets up with it. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, it's going to disappear. So, I will say that before uh, the COVID funds came, we were still propping our budget up through other things. We were robbing Peter to, Peter to pay Paul from other programs. Uh, a, a program is just that. It has a particular amount of money associated with it, and once you run out, that's the end of the program. You cut service, or you find the money from another place. And so we have been doing this for years, uh, primarily through things such as contracts with, uh, um, with Salisbury University, uh, the MAC Center, uh, contracts with them, um, and other things such as that, and trying to build up a reserve slowly over the years, we've finally been able to do that. That was, that was uh, upon the suggestion of the Tri-County Council itself to have some type of budget since uh, uh, public transit is such an expensive endeavor. Jeff, you had a question? Uh, yeah, real quick. First of all, thank you for your um, financial management. Uh, I, I sit in the meetings over there, and I'm pretty impressed with everything you guys are, are doing and laying out. Um, I think you guys can pinch a penny so tight you're giving Lincoln a headache. Um, but a couple of things, this recalculation that the state's done, is this one time? Is this going to happen every year? Or the proposed change in funding method? Right yeah. now they don't know why they give us the money they give us other than they gave it to us last year, and that is from MTA. At, so they came up with a with a methodology of allocating it, and Shore Transit happens to be quite a big winner. And it's an allocation, 100% of of the of our allocation. 10% is based on population, and then 30% in each category based on unlinked passenger trips, revenue hours, and revenue miles. We don't win on population or trips, but we do win on hours and miles, and it, it adds an extra $1.7 million. It, there are some in the state that it, it takes away some of their funding. So. Okay. So my second question is uh, now that it appears that Somerset's not going to commit to the additional funding, how does that affect the, how this is all going to shake out? We have not heard from Somerset, so this is so this is um, news news to us. No okay. one has inquired, and in and in fairness, if I may sure. link that second question back again, how do we budget and how do we plan? We understand that these things will happen, and we have to plan right now. So we do have cuts that will that we will work in to try and manage our our additional monies that we can make the match right now. 
and we do have planned service reductions. And again, there's a proposal on May 30th to make a significant service reduction and service suspension so that we can begin to bring us back in line. We can turn it back on. Okay. But that's one of the ways, and we will continue, and it is my job to manage that local match. And I am reaching out to Title Health, for instance. I have been, I was at today with um, Fresenius, a local branch mm -hmm. of Fresenius, to try and bring in I, so, uh, Somerset Local Management Board to try and discuss sponsored routes to bring in some additional money. What there are, it's that's what I'm charged to do, and I will do my best to overcome that. If we can't get the local match, then we cannot take all of the local, all of the funds. And again, that's a tri-county council board decision about how we choose to approach that. Mm -hmm. I do say that that this region is a three-legged stool, and sometimes one can't support as much weight as the other and we need all three of us and this place this region in the eastern shore i'm from delaware i've never seen anything like this where you guys work as government so effectively as one unit it's it's admirable so we'll find a way thank you i know that a big hit was part of the fact that we had to drop about ninety thousand a year just in advertising alone where I think you know we had gone to extremes, and, and it was a, a very good new revenue source, and that was that was very unfortunate. So I do I do get that. May, may, I, I would like to ask uh, uh, Andy, could you could you re reiterate for the uh, council, please, what ninety thousand dollars does in a public transit system with a budget of ten to twelve million? Um, it does a, maybe a day. A day, a week, a year for the, for the year of service. Yeah. We, we have a, let's just call it in this room, at the most lean way, $45 a revenue hour to operate on a $3 fare. That's, that's how much we recoup. There are different numbers you'll hear out there, and there's a lot of different ways to look at it. That doesn't include any, any infrastructure, any, it just includes the top two things that cost drivers and fuel and the previous director and tri-county council went to bat and put propane on these buses and has really saved our skin with fuel costs and but we have increased driver salaries over 30 percent and we'll be doing so again and modify and, and have that in the budget because we can't be competitive we have been able to go from 36 drivers when i arrived with five retiring, retiring in two months, to now we've got 46 drivers. No one else in the state was able to do that. You, you mentioned reserves. How much do you have in your reserves? I'm trying to think what we, sh what we showed at our last budget, uh, the financials on that. For transit, it's about a million, isn't it? Something just below it. I, I cannot. I'm not certain. I would be afraid to speak. I, I'm afraid. I'd, I'd have to look at that, but I, I will get the information to you. I'll send it to you. Yes. Any questions? No. Any other comments you make? I'll just thank you for mm -hmm. letting us explain. Okay. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Because what you what you do what you provide for us every year enables us to run a thirty or forty million dollar transit operation across three counties for eight million dollars. So it, it's it's huge. And I don't want to come in here and say and, and seem like I don't appreciate all of the benefit that you provide the three county area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Gosh. Back to uh, what uh, we were saying before the interview with uh, Tri County is I know that uh, a, a good part of what discussions are going to be today um, are areas that we think we can possibly make some cuts in order to um, allow for the, um, uh, 
the possibility of opening up funding for uh, increases to uh, employees. Uh, anyone want to open the floor as far as where they think there may be some leeway? Well, I've got a, something I want to say, and I'll probably say this again at our budget meeting. We're working on a budget that's largely dependent on three items. One is our disparity grant. The other is our, the other is um, $10 million from the reserves. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, Laura. And the other is $7 million that we're um, supposedly using from ARFA money. Now, if we, if we go with this budget full on like it is and just cut enough to get an extra 2% for employee raises, next year, that 7% is going to be gone. Or that 7 million, excuse me. That 7 million is going to be gone. And supposedly that's the end of that. Is that right, Pam? They have one more year, so it'll be another $7 million next year. May I explain? May I come? Sure. Oh, yeah, please, come on up. I was under the impression that was, or thought, I thought I'd been told that anyway. So the $7 million in American Rescue funding, most of, most of the number that we are budgeting for in American Rescue is related to... Um, one-time capital projects. There's about $2 million in that to cover raises. So, but there is still available for one more year worth of American Rescue funding in our budget. Um, but majority of the $7 million, if you're cutting the $7 million, you're not, I'm not cutting. I didn't but say I'm anything about cutting just, it. But what I'm trying to explain to you is, is most of that $7 million is not covering recurring costs. It's covering one-time capital. So it is not, if the $7 million goes away next year, that's not an issue for us to make our budget. Again, the piece that we need to be understanding of is, is that we're putting $17 million of one-time capital in the budget. We're covering that with $10 million worth of fund balance and, and about, I want to say about $5 million of American Rescue. So that leaves us with $2 million of American Rescue that we're using but our growth rate on um, property tax is about $2 million. And even though we are using $2 million, I'm, not, I'm still not in a structural deficit at this point in time. So the- Close. We are, um, I created, did I bring that with me? I thought I sent it to- to you, showing you, maybe I didn't. Let me see if I can find that. I the created reserves. a schedule for myself showing where we are. On, on the reserves? On the reserves. Yeah, you did email it to me. That is what shows us that we're still, I still think this budget, even using American Rescue, we're not in danger of, of crossing to a structural deficit. Now. We, the world goes into a recession or we, the federal government defaults on <laughs> stuff on June 1st, that's everybody is, all things are off the table. But based on normal operations, I do not think we are at that point. Are we at a point that next year we will not be able to make significant capital purchases because the other piece you have to remember is that in the number that I'm giving you as an operating deficit or operating number, there's also operating capital. So I'm saying we have $17 million of one-time capital projects, but we also have 
capital within everybody's operating budget that we could make a decision if we have an issue that next year we don't fund. So I'm only counting the big capital projects that have made it onto the CIP as being capital. There is capital in every single one of the departments that count as capital that we could say, okay, next year I'm not purchasing computers. Next year I'm not purchasing a piece of heavy equipment for roads. Next year we're not purchasing, um, we're not leasing any new cars. We're only gonna pay the lease payments that we currently have. Next year I'm not purchasing uh, or doing a small capital project that's under $100,000 that we just funded in the operating budget. So it's a really long answer to both of your questions, but I don't think we're at a point that we're close to a structural deficit. When you're, when you're talking about fund balance, but that, that is um, contingencies, or that's, that's, that's savings. That is savings, but we are getting to a point where we need to show our constituents that we're using our savings account in the most appropriate manner to help our county. Um, it's not helping us sitting it in the bank account. The state of Maryland doesn't let us invest it in anything super risky, so we don't make a lot of money on it. Um, we are, I'm trying to avoid borrowing in this year for the most part to avoid the higher interest rates. So it makes more sense to set, spend our savings account on these capital projects that the county needs. Hey, to, to some people's dismay, I've been here a long time, okay? And I've heard for the past 15 years, and I can't say I've ever heard it from you, but I've heard it from county executives, I've heard it from count, county administrators, of how important it is to keep a healthy fund balance, reserve balance, so we can save money when it comes time to borrow money. And that has such a big effect on our borrowing rate. So that's the problem I see with, so, depleting, with depleting our reserves. So I have now sat with the bond agencies for two years. We're getting ready to go into our third cycle that I've sat with. We have grown our fund balance the last two years significantly, and it has not, we were at a double A plus at 35 million. We're at a double A plus at 60 million. It's not moving our target by being any higher than what we were two and a half years ago. Yes. I don't want us to go back to the number of $35 million, but based on the projection that I gave you, we're not. We're looking at going back to between 45 and $50 million if we spend every dollar of what we've budgeted. We have never spent every dollar of what we've budgeted because of the conservative nature of budgeting full employment. That full employment budgeting saves us money every year. Because I can't ever predict, I wouldn't have predicted that your internal audit position would be vacant as long as it's been vacant. But if I put an attrition rate on every department and you then kept your position the whole year, your budget would be short. Because I have said, well, you're going to, well, you only have three employees in your department, so I'm predicting every year that you're going to lose part of an employee. We don't do that, we budget full employment to allow our departments to have the ability to have full employment at all times. But every department has, I, I can't think of a time that, and no, no employer has full employment forever unless they've got two employees and it's themselves and like a, a spouse or a sibling or a child. It, it's just not, full employment is a hard thing to maintain 100% of the time. So I believe that the use of fund balance is judicious and appropriate to purchase the things that we need 
in this fiscal year, avoid borrowing in this fiscal year, and I don't believe it will cause us any significant... I've, I've discussed it with our, our um, financial advisors. We don't feel it's going to cause any significant harm to us in the borrowing agencies because we have grown from a $35 million number to a $60 million number in three years. Do you have a, we did develop, I remember, a, a target policy, right, for the fund balance itself. Was it between, was it 7 and 9, 5 and 9% or something like that? I forget no more. I don't even remember what it was, but I remember going through that process about. I don't think it was ever ago. formally adopted, though. I think we did. It was on, Wayne brought it to us. I remember. I know there was, an, a, there was a policy brought to council to increase our thing, and it. Um, I don't think it got approved. It was never approved. So it has been. And even if we adopt what has been brought to council, we wouldn't be violating that. I just don't want to see us get in the habit of using savings to balance the budget. Again, if I was, if I was balancing the budget on operational costs, I would say we wouldn't, this budget wouldn't be presented as is. Budget, again, it is you and I, if I want to buy a car, and I don't want to pay interest rate, I'm going to pay for it out of my savings account and replenish my savings account because it makes more sense for us not to pay interest on me buying a personal car. This is the same thing. It makes more sense. Every capital project that we're looking at funding in this budget is a worthy capital project for us to be doing. And the only way to cut is honestly cut either operating costs or capital costs. Yes, it would save us fund balance, but it's not saving us. It, those projects are just going to be deferred to a higher, possibly higher cost time. I guess uh, maybe you were talking about, were you, were you talking about the general fund debt service? Is that what we were talking about? It was what you thought was something that had been formalized as opposed to it being a policy? We have a debt service policy that is formalized. Again, there was a fund balance policy that I believe was brought forward oh. prior to my time to raise the formal fund balance requirement, the actual balance. and that was not approved. Okay. I didn't know if you were talking about the fund balance or the debt service right. obligation. There is a debt policy that is approved, and there's a fund balance policy that is approved, but we were looking to make the fund balance policy more restrictive again, prior to my time. Questions? Yeah, so obviously these capital expenses are just non-reoccurring. This is just a one-time thing, and it's it's something that needs to be done. So That's not what you said. So here's, again, the question, the non-reoccurring. Well, <laughs> so an air, the airport runway extension has been a multi-year project that we've been funding. Right, okay. Um, Mardella has been a multi-year project that we've been funding. But when we are done with that multi-year project of funding Mardella, we will not be looking at renovating Mardella or doing anything associated with Mardella for years to come. So reoccurring in an accounting term means it's something that you're going to have. That's my salary in the budget for here on out. A capital project that might be a multi-year capital project is not reoccurring but it is happening for multiple years in multiple budgets. It's a technicality, but I, yeah. I'm an accountant, so. <laughs> so didn't I hear you say you, you're using two million, not for capital? I'm using two million of American, approximately two million of American rescue dollars to fund the pay raises in um, this budget those funds next year we'll have those funds for one more year yes mm -hmm. and those funds have very specific uses and one of the uses that is allowed is the retention and recruitment of employees so offering higher salaries allows us to retain and recruit new employees and so that growth factor and that's the only piece that we've been putting in is the growth factor is what's going in. And, and, and in two years, our, our budget is going to grow, right? 
That is, that is the goal. That is the goal. That is, um, you know, as again, our revenue cap limits us to 2%, but $2 million is approximately 2%. So if we stay on our revenue cap, we can fund that $2 million in the future. Yeah, but that's really not, you're going to have to depend on income tax reserve revenue. You know, that is a that is a standard number we get every year, and that two million dollars is what increase is what we depend on for I think for our basic budget everything every year. Um, I wouldn't say that you you would want to depend on that to cover recurring costs because we've had that two million dollars every single year, year in and year out, and um, it's not as if it's going to be an extra two million. Exponentially, it increases, but not. Well, it's it's a new two million dollars. So right now, it is a new two million, but it's like a new two million every year. Is correct. It's anticipate. a new two million, but right now I'm not using that two million dollars to fund. Well, there's no real direct. Uh, uh, I'm just. You can't really attribute to any particular expense. It goes. Correct. It's in the operating. But plan. like, so for example, in this budget. I, I think we're always going to be, what I'm trying to say, I think we're always going to be consistently, because of the revenue cap, for the most part, we're always going to be seeing a consistent increase every year in that, and we expect that. I think what we need to watch out for is what our income tax uh, revenues are going to be year after year, because those are the ones that fluctuate the most. Well, I mean, the state implementing a $15 um, uh, minimum wage is not going to harm income tax. If you think, I mean, every employer is having to look at that $15 and say, that's what I need to pay my employees. And we, as a county, looked at that and said, we have to pay all of our employees more, maybe not keeping it all even all the way up, but we all have to pay our more. So that is going to generate more income tax. But if um, we go into a recession, though, that if we, would if we go potentially into hurt us. It could. But again, I have not budgeted us at, so for example, just to give you, um, in, in this budget, just for general services, just for general services, which is part of the general fund, there's $555,000 of operating capital. So next year, if we decide that our budget is tight, we, I'm covering that with operating revenues right now. We don't have to fund another $555,000 worth of operating capital. We can make the decision that operating capital, our employees are more important than paying operating capital. So again, when I say we're not in a structural deficit, I'm covering employees, benefits, operating costs, and operating capital. And we're still not in a structural deficit. So all I don't of you want to be close to a structural deficit. But we're deficit. not. No. We're, we're not. That's not where we're at. And that's why I'm saying that I believe the usage of the fund balance is an appropriate thing. Because again, in my brain, that $10 million is only buying us capital projects. It is not buying us a single operating cost. Our operating costs are covered by our operating revenues. Okay. Um, what, what, what items were there uh, that the council wanted to look at uh, for consideration if you felt there were cuts you'd like to make? Um, and I'm assuming the number for 1% is about 250, was it 250,000 that we agreed on? I'm assuming. Where is it that we're looking to try to maybe make up some a difference there? Anybody want to begin? Can I ask one quick question? Sure. Um, Pam, going back to the ARPA funding, um, just for clarification, the seven million that's in the fiscal year twenty four budget will not be in the fiscal year twenty five budget, correct? So the only, so the di the only piece of what would be, if we spend every dollar of that seven million dollars, then no, that won't be in. If we don't spend it then it can be reappropriated again next year. Because I've got $20 million worth of American Rescue funding to spend by a specific point in time. You could do that till fiscal year 26? It's fiscal year 26. It has to be spent by, I think, December of 25. Okay. 
Um, so again, we have to spend it by a specific point in time. So what happened in the very first year, uh, 21, 21, 22, last year, I think was the, first. we, we got money, we budgeted for it and we didn't end up spending it all. So we budgeted money again in 23. We have not yet spent everything that we intend. Um, had allocated for that. So now we're looking at budgeting for 24. So the long answer is, is that we can reappropriate until it has actually gone out the door. Up and until that deadline. Up until that deadline. Right. Um, John, I'd like to finish when I started. Thanks for coming forward and explaining all that. Okay. I I yeah. no, that's fine. That's, that's what we needed to be. You know, I was under the impression from what I've been told and what I've read that you know, we also had the issue of the $15 million disparity grant that we're balancing the budget with, correct? We're using We that. have always used the disparity grants okay. to balance our budget. Right. Okay. And we heard what Johnny Mounts had to say about write-downs from the state. I called another delegate this morning, and um, he uh, said that the state had done three write-downs this past year as far as revenue projections. And my question was, do you think the, rev uh, the disparity grant will be cut? He says, anything's on the table. He said, High re highway user revenues, which we don't get a lot of now anyway. But so I'm, I'm just putting that out there. He so gave us a warning. So. I will tell you the write downs that so far have happened are write downs on, um, they still are high, their number is still higher than their previous number. So yes, they have right, wrote down their number. They just haven't written down their number to, they're not yet projecting less revenue than they earned in the year before. Um, our disparity grant number doesn't really change. It, it has stayed relatively static. It, it, went up. it did go up some, yeah. but it, it's still in the grand scheme of um, the calculation that creates a disparity grant has also not changed. Yes, the state always has the ability to make those changes. Um, oh. And But at, at this point in time, we would be, um, there would be other jurisdictions that would be harmed, if not as much more than what we are if the disparity grants disappeared. So are you, are you saying that we shouldn't have taken that as a warning from our senator? I'm saying that I don't think that would, uh, my opinion would be that would not be one of the first places they would look. I mean, I remember 2007, 2008, when they, te they took $7 million away from Wacomico County for roads money, for a HUR. I mean, so to say that it couldn't happen. I'm not saying that it couldn't. What I'm saying is, is I, I don't, w especially with um, Kerwin and all of that, I doubt schools would be the first place this state is going to look for cuts. If there's any, any number of scenarios that could develop, I think what we want to focus on is where we feel that the spending may be excessive. And if we do want to be a little more conservative, I think the best use of our time today is to try to figure out and to propose where we want to make these cuts. So uh, I don't know what is on the table right now. Um, the floor is open for anyone that wants to um, to bring anything forward. I guess we could start with Tri-County being they were just here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, I could see us cutting that fully. They don't know if they're gonna get the grants or not. Somerset's not chipping in their part. You know that is a fact. We have an email from Mr. Taylor. Yeah. Okay. They're not chipping in the money to get the federal grant, which is the 306. Yeah, right. The 306 422, they mm -hmm. are not chipping in their portion for that federal grant. What's our portion? 306 422. I think theirs was 152, something like that. Both Worcester and Somerset are yeah. about half yeah. of what we had. Yeah, they're at 153 211. Yeah. So the question is if that's something that the council wants to see done. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do a consensus on it. Um, keep in mind of what they said about the fact that they're losing about a million dollars a year in that program. 
if they get it. No, he said they're losing. They're already losing. Right now. Not a yeah. Right now. They're, they're constantly fighting battles. As, as Andrew said, they're constantly fighting battles over and over again on how to cut, and they have to have public hearings to announce to people that they're going to be cutting back on some routes or other routes. So um, I think they are working locally to do everything they can. I just don't know if the federal government has dropped something in our lap that is the best uh, business model. So just informational purposes, if we cut the 306, it still is about $100,000 more. They would still be getting a growth mm -hmm. of about $100,000 in what the council or what would be left in the budget? Because we have grown their base number from 595 to 703, plus given them $56,000 in capital money. Right. So the 306, yes, would preclude them from getting that um, federal money, but it is not cutting them back to less than what they're getting this fiscal year. So they're still getting more. They're still getting more. Well, if Somerset County doesn't give them their their portion, they wouldn't get the grant anyway, correct? That's my understanding. So Somerset County says they're not giving it, so they're not going to get the grant anyway. I think he said though he would find another funding source. Well, he did here. Yeah, that's yeah. that's why I asked the question. If in light of the fact that Somerset County apparently is not going to contribute, how does that con affect Maybe they could the find formula. another sun funding source for what we're not giving them also? I was under the impression he was just suggesting that if they didn't, if they didn't fund their portion, then they wouldn't get that particular match. I didn't hear him say he was going to lose the full amount. The the, the match would be would have to be adjusted. So if we don't give ours, they'd have to adjust it. The right. Same way. He yeah. was saying well, whatever the individual counties mm -hmm. contribute is, mm -hmm. is dependent is how much the match would be from the federal government. So. And that's going to depend on the debt ceiling. The federal government portion of that. Oh, you never know what they're That's going to depend mm -hmm. on that. Right. That trickles all the way down to little old Wacomico County. Yep. But, yeah. So, anyway. Um, <coughs> where's the council on this? Yeah, I'm fine with that. With which? With what Joe said. With, with removing the, it? Yeah, removing it, yep. Uh, Josh? I mean, they're already anemic as it is. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, um, I, I don't have strong feelings on it, but no. Mm. Uh, Jeff, uh, Shane, no, no, as in. In other words, yes, you want to keep the 306, or no, you uh, no. Would, no would be that you would want to cut no. it. Cut it. Yeah, uh, oh. Scott, I'm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I, 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 really I, I okay. So I, I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure I understand. You want it cut. You want it. Safe. For clarity, I'm saying keep it. Joe and James and and. Um, and Shane want to cut it. No, okay. Not that I don't appreciate all the work they're doing. It's just. And Jeff wants it cut. So there's four. All right, so we have four. All right. So if I understand correctly, one of the budget amendment proposals would be that there would be a reduction in Tri County Council by 306 422. Right. Next item on the agenda. And keep in mind, um, gentlemen, too, uh, two different goals we would be achieving here, okay? Um, some of the cuts that you may or may not be recommending for the, and I'll go back again to this increase in salaries we're trying to achieve. Some of the cuts that we're going to make today or suggest today would have to be what I would call from recurring expenses, not from one time. Right. This is probably at this point in time a one time, which would bring the budget down some, which is fine, which is, uh, right. which is very good. So there, there may be other areas where you want to look for something that would be an obligation to a recurring expense right. that would certainly offset Operate. the salaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. what would, what would, what, what's next? Um, I've got a list. I want to hear this first. <laughs> go ahead. you got a list, too. Go ahead, guys. Who so else? I was looking last night at some of these salaries, and I see that several people got a, a more than a 3% raise significantly more i think maybe we should go down so the issue with going you have to understand there are specific people that the state's attorney has put some of those that are more than three percent are funding the position it's a vacant position 
It is funding the position at the midpoint so that we have the ability to hire. So for example, your internal audit position looks like a raise, but you have a vacant internal audit position. And so I could, we could put it in the budget at what that person made previously, but that means that's the only number you could hire to. So if you find somebody with five more years of experience than Levin had, you can't offer them more money without a budget amendment and changing the position control and changing. <laughs> so we have given departments the flexibility for vacant positions to hire up to the midpoint because of the 202009 that says the position control document rules how much is paid. Can we, can we go can we go go through each one of these and you tell me if they're vacant or not? Not easily. I literally I do not have that information with me because I we do it by position number and I don't have I don't have 600 employees memorized. I can tell you by So if I give you a position number you can't I can I can make an educated guess based on um, like the first one I, I just ha happened to look at last night community program coordinator went from 44 772 to 55,000 so that is um, that's in LMB and that position is hundred percent grant funded so and it has been approved by the grant for that position to get a raise so there would be zero savings to the county for that position to be cut. What if the approach were to make it a 3% max on current employees only, and that would not be employees that were matched or you know state state grant funded? That so. And it would not vacancies. Well, that's not, what not we allowing did. for increases in vacancies. That's what we did. So you're saying every employee has a no more than a three percent increase. So except for those employees that are on the list of Schedule E, where we're changing titles, job descriptions, duties, mm -hmm. those have more. Mm -hmm. But those actually aren't on the list that you have because this list here is current employees and vacancies as they're currently graded. And so they are on here because they've either been given a raise by being an M31, being an M32, or being anybody else getting 3%, except for positions that our state's attorney has asked for additional funding, except for midpoint hirings, except for grant funded, except for elections, which we don't have control over. Right. So I could there be an employee in here that's getting more than those designations? Yes. Do I believe there is a significant number of them? No, because again, those are the rules I was operating under to make this. So yes, LMB employees, pretty much every single one of them is getting more than 3%. Every single one of them is not in the general fund. So you cut those funds, okay, we just don't get those grant dollars. And we may or may not have the employee that we currently have or currently are looking at to fund that position. Right. I'll give you that. I didn't know it was grant funded. Yes. So what about another example, the director of public works going from 99,000 to 134,000? Because that's funding it at the midpoint because it's a vacant position. That's a heck of a increase but there's no person in it but there will be but so you want hopefully, yeah hopefully. yeah but you want us to be able to find somebody to f fill that position at the current rate of 99 who has experience who has a PE who wants to work for Wacomico County who wants to work for our benefits but you want them to work at 99 we haven't been successful at that number yet we're putting it in the budget at 134 to give us the ability to negotiate with somebody to bring them in and say, hey, we could fund this position up to 134 with your experience. Doesn't mean I'm offering it at 134. Again, the I'm policy- I'm not in favor of that much of an increase, personally. But there's no person that's getting that increase. 
There's not a single person that's got it. I told you. I told you last night. <laughs> it, it is it is the same for our internal auditor position. We did the exact same thing. We funded so, it at the midpoint just to allow that additional funding for someone who has more experience. So your county council internal auditor is going up th almost $13,000 to fund it at a midpoint. We have set a policy to allow our employee, our departments the ability to hire experienced people. You said we're going up 13,000? Yes. That's a big difference, 13,000 or 30. Yeah, but you're also talking somebody who is a grade 43 versus a grade 45. They're both they both originally were earning 99 in the high 90s, mid 90s to high 90s. But you've got two higher grades and the requirements to be a public works director are more than the requirements to be an internal auditor. You were paying closer to your midpoint for your internal auditor than what we're paying what we were per currently paying for our public works director. So if you put them at the same number of years, your public works director should have been being paid more. And they're, they're running, in a the sense of running three departments, they're running a heck of a lot of people. Correct. They're managing a whole lot of people. So again, we had to have a policy as to how to put vacant positions in the budget. We didn't look at each position that was vacant and say, this position I'm only putting up 5,000, this position I'm putting up six, this position. The policy was, if the position is vacant when we created this position control document, they're being put in here at midpoint. So here's my goal. I think the employees of this county deserve more than 3%. Okay. I went through here trying to achieve that and trying to find every piece that I can cut I don't think this is the appropriate place to be making those cuts. Well, I mean, I found other things. This is so this sorry. would not be the first place I would look for cuts because these are either current employees or vacant positions that you're asking us to try to fill. I would look other places within this budget for that. You've just um, cut $306,000. That number is coming from operating revenue. Even though it looks like a one-time thing, it was coming from operating costs. So you're saving $306,000 worth of revenue. You've covered 1% with that cut. I do need $85,000 in change for health insurance. Right. So, so right now you're, um, can't see my own calculator, $221,000 is what you would have left available with just this one cut. So if you have, again, highly recommend this would not be the place you look for cuts because this is, this is actual either currently filled positions or positions we're trying to fill, <coughs> including your internal auditor. Was that job part of the study that we just finished yes. six months ago? And are, is, are the, is that an appropriate range based on that yes. study? Okay, just curious. And that's literally the midpoint of that range. Okay. So again, we have made the decision that midpoint is the place to go because you're looking to hire somebody who has had experience. But maybe because of the size of the county that we are, we're not somebody who has you know, 20 years of experience. We're looking for somebody who might have five, six, seven years of experience. Um, any other comments, Joe? I've got a question. General services, you've got a, um, about a hundred and what six thousand dollar increase in operating expenses. Um, yes, let me see where that is being generated by. Number 14. Yep, I, I, I'm just trying to figure out which line item or if it's just every line going up and it is pretty much, they have um, 
maintenance services for the Webster building is the biggest one. I think there might be a new contract for there for $45,000. Um, otherwise, most of the lines are literally just a thousand here. Um, but wouldn't they be under capital if they're repairs to a building? Uh, depending on what they are, if they are, um, if they don't meet our capitalization policy, no. You can have operating costs that are not capital, like you know, you you um, repair a wall. Most times, if it's just one wall you're repairing, that's not capitalizable. I mean, they were already getting 607000 and I guess there should be some justification why it went up. I mean, the 607000 they're getting, they've already repaired those walls from before, correct? So, so I mean, another one of their, another one of their, from their original budget to now, $15,000 is just electric cost for this building. Operating expenses. So we have electric costs going up by 15 for that, five for uh, gas, and we don't yet have the solar panel online. That Those aren't built yet. So hopefully by budget 25, 26, we're looking at decreased electric costs across the county for the agreement that we just put in for the, with the airport. Okay, let me go move on. You mentioned the, um, Le um, is it LEOPS for Losa. the fire departments? LOSA. LOSA. LOSA, okay. Losa. LOSA, LEOPS. LOSA. Is that, is that number reflected in these budgets, 19 yes, and 20? It is. it is, it is in, give me one second. It is the, that's Salisbury Fire Ambulance. Volunteer. It'd be 19, 20, or 20. It's in 20, and it is in the contingency other line of $410,000. So 400 of that is LOSA, and 10,000 of that is asking for money that we give to the overall Fire Chiefs Association for um, fire prevention um, stuff. Yeah, that, that, uh, that LOSA money did. Uh that just rolled over from last year? So if this program was created, it would be a $400,000 cost every year. At this point in time, the volunteer fire, so it would be an operating cost. Um, at this point in time, they aren't interested in it being an operating cost. Right. And so that's $400,000 there that would be available for something. Could, I'm just, I go ahead, Jim. I was just gonna throw this out there, but I wonder if that would be a good idea to maybe recommend that the 400000 go to the volunteer fire services just because, I mean, it's already allocated for them already. I mean, it might be because they don't want it this year, right? And then next year they want a property tax break. So instead of the money just sitting here this year, I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, and one of the other thoughts is you could cut that four hundred. Yeah, cut it or, you know, like it's already been you know, allocated for firemen. I'm just saying, like, if we take that away, they might not like that too much. And I'm just, just putting that in everyone's ear. I think we just gave them, didn't we just give them a $118,000 increase per station? I gave you those numbers. I don't have it memorized. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was significant. Yeah, so they, I mean, they've got, I think they've gotten a healthy increase. Mm -hmm. And, and over I, the last two years, yeah. they've gotten a significant increase each of the last sure. two years. Yeah, I think, um, the key here too, because we were talking about this before we sat down today, and the 400 is really something that would need probably need to be implemented next year anyway, because you're not going to see that impact for tax. Taxes are going to be billed in this, July, and the 400 wouldn't be in this budget. If you're doing the tax side, yeah. it wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So again, the tax side would literally be on the revenue side, not here. So yeah. again, um, okay, the 400 is either could just sit there and not get paid out the door, mm -hmm. or council could make a decision associated with that 400. Said some of it we use for fire prevention. 10,000. There's 410 in the line. 400 was intended for LOSA. 
They said they don't want LOSA. They said they do not want LOSA. Not right now, it wasn't a priority. It is not a priority for them at this moment. I see what you're saying about it. it's not an operator, it's a revenue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, you explain that because that would be more advantageous to the county than the low sap because yep. because we'll just other, backfill it revenue, with other with a revenue cap and all that yes. so so this four hundred thousand dollars is based on what i heard in here available funding for council to make a decision on I think the reason we're asking for so much for clarification is because the council supports the fire department a thousand percent and we don't want any any suggestions that maybe we're we're deliberately cutting them because we yes. we don't like what they do they're the ones who actually suggested it if i heard okay. them right so then that would be a 400 am i correct mm -hmm. are, are, good with that? are we in concert okay. with that the only thing I would like to do is, so is talk to the Chiefs Association. Shane, use your microphone, please. The only thing I'd like to do is talk to the Chiefs Association to make sure that they understand what we're doing and make sure that that's what they want. Last Chiefs Association I was at, that's, that's, I was talking to John Hilton and he said they weren't interested in LOSAP. They wanted the tax, that's what he told me. But he that's didn't what they know said about in here. Huh? I mean, that's that is what I heard in this meeting is is that they aren't interested in us coming forward with any kind of plan associated with this four hundred thousand dollars. Mr. President. So yes. Um, I just want to mention that when I spoke to Councilwoman Shaney Shields earlier today, she said that she was not in favor of cutting that from the budget. Okay. Go ahead. Thank Funky, you. Can you elaborate on why it's in there? We weren't aware that they did not want to go forward with the retainment bonuses at that time when we were doing the budget. You know, so we put it in thinking we were going to go forward with that plan that Pam and I think what David Fitzgerald and some people had worked on before. And then they said no, they really wanted to go to the uh, tax cut model. So, Which is a year, probably a year off. Yeah. They're, they are aware of that from our meeting here is, is mm -hmm. that it, the first time it could be implemented would be for the tax bills for fiscal 25. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, yes. Um, yeah. Jeff. Um, the contingency transfer reserve fund 46. Yes. I think I saw an email saying we could possibly reduce that by 327,000. So that is, if council is in agreement. Uh, can we wrap up on the low, low step oh, first? I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, Did I, I jump the gun? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're, you're good. We just we want to make sure we yeah, do the list first. Yeah. So, is it a cut or not? Um, the, the, the if you're in favor of the, the cut, then you would say yes. Jeff. I think we should check with the fire chiefs. I agree. Right. I they, they, the last time they came before the council, right. when we had our budget session with them, they said they were not in favor of this program. Correct. Did they? Yes. They okay. sat here in this meeting. John, last John told me that, that the other night. I, I just want to make sure they're not thinking that, right, that it's they're going right. to, you are going to use, that money's in the budget and you're going to use it for something else well, to get they, them through. They know, they, we have that money in this year's budget and it's not being used for anything except for if we had gotten LOSA through. They're aware that when we put the $400,000 in, it's intended for LOSA and they're, they're aware of that because it is specifically identified to them in both the 23 budget and the 24 budget that the $400,000 was only intended for LOSA. So all we can do is kind of make a recommendation of, we're just giving them the opportunity to use it for something different, right? So I'd, say we, either, I'd, I'd say we cut it. If any miracle comes up, we can look at reserves, contingency transfer. They're in favor of it, yeah. All right. So I'm, yes, cut it. Shane. Mm -hmm. Joe, yeah, Josh, yeah. Mm -hmm. James, yep, Shane. <laughs> you can say no if you want. Okay, so we have a that's, majority. That's four hundred thousand okay. dollars. Got it. Okay. okay. I mean, I, I, to reassure you guys, when I talked to John, and they were not happy with the low set, and not the way it was drawn up, not who did it, and 
they just kind of said it was being pushed on them. But, but this administration is going to work to get this property. Yes. It would have to, it'll be introduced to council this year for the next fiscal year. Awesome. Okay. That, um, only, that only benefits certain people. Yeah. Correct. I, yeah. I misspoke earlier when I was talking about the, I was thinking of the property tax cut, not the low set. <laughs> so Jeff's comment was on the savings. That would make the assumption that council's willing to make a change to the CIP, move, add a fifth project for the Board of Education, put that project on as um, PAYGO, but move two projects that we currently have on there over to bond. And that way, and that would accomplish that 300, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't bring that, I'm trying to find that sheet and I can't find it. I don't think I printed it out um, on the Board of Ed. I, I could probably pull it up on my phone. But um, that would be how we would accomplish that cut that you were talking about. Now, which, which projects are these? I'm sorry. So um, let me pull it up it, on my phone because I, I It's I an don't. email from May 18th. Okay, that will make it easier for me to find. Thank um, you. And this it looks like it's least. Glen Avenue parking. So we would add Glen Avenue parking and put that in as Pago, And we would yeah. move... And this is where I, it's highlighted in yellow, but um, May 18th, you said? May 18th, yes. Okay, give me one second and I can get back to May 18th. You're looking for this chart with the 1.3 million, Pam? You're looking for the chart with 1.3 million? No, that's not the chart. Chase Rush, Tom. Okay. Capital changes spreadsheet. Okay, so come on, open up. Okay, what we would do is we would add Glen Avenue parking to at 1.8 million and change to um, Pago. Mm -hmm. We would move Y High roof renovation of 950,000 and Parkside roof renovation at 1.2 million to capital funding. We would leave the $1.3 million for Fruitland Primary as um, PAYGO. What that accomplishes is that then, yes, you would have the ability to decrease our debt that we borrow because we would be reducing the amount of Mardella. And we would also decrease the use of fund balance. But what would happen is, is that in that 46 that you were talking about, and I don't have, we would, um, we would be changing the amount of transfer to capital projects of the 17,443. I did not work up that exact number, but on the revenue side, our use of fund balance would also come down by $327,000, which is a, so, if we didn't, it, or you could reallocate the 327, but that is strictly a capital project savings. That is not an operating savings. And so that goes back to the beginning conversation that I had is that that 327 is not a recurring cost. So that one, if you do reallocate the 327, you're reallocating one time money for possibly a recurring money. So my recommendation would be is that you make all those changes, but only cut the th and cut the 327 in total. Cut it out of the revenue side, cut it out of the expense side. We can't touch revenues. Yeah, but we can recommend back to you that you cut the revenue, which we have done in the past. Say something else? Yep. Oh. <laughs> so what's the number we're trying to hit to cover the insurance and the extra 2%? So that's 685,000. Well, 250 times 2 plus 86 is 586. It's for each one cent, right? And we're at 706. We're at 706. Oh, she said that was the 2%, right? That's 2%. 2 cents, you mean? 2 cents? 
two percent raise two percent yeah. raise and yeah. increasing our um so we're at 706 right now and you need 586. that covers insurance and the two percent yes so I wanted to go for another percent is, uh, i'm just going to throw this out there i i brought this up last time with the contractual services i know we're we're four times higher than we were last year um, six times more than what we spend last year and uh, I was just curious if anybody had any interest on trimming that a little bit I, you don't have to cut the whole thing I was just saying just trim it a little bit and you might be able to get another percent so. and the purpose of those funds are this is for in case we need to right. hire well I looked at the last five years and the average is 22,000 and we've got it at 200,000 talking for the county council yeah i'm talking about the contractual services well james let, let me say something we probably already know what that's for what's it for i'm just trying well, to figure out because you know our county that's... executive stood up to our county attorney and asked the question where can i hire a good lawyer so i can sue the county council for defamation now, i'm sorry andy isn't here today to back that up but he will back it up so we don't get sued by the county executive or not and not only that we need money for the headhunter for the um, yeah but the headhunter money is in a different line yeah, item that line item was specifically so, for anticipated legal expenses you know if you need to hire a forensic auditor i mean that money would come out of that line item as yeah. well so this money is for legal battle is that mm -hmm. Is that the anticipation of legal anticipation and it because it's in there doesn't mean we're going to spend it i know but it's 150 million dollars i mean that's 150,000. i wish it was 150 million 150,000. <laughs> listen if we're not going to cut it then we'll just go 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 on but i just thought i'd bring it up because it is it is an outlier so i just thought i'd bring it up john that money would be in contingency right it's just just going to sit it there. Would be, it would be in the count. I would. I would say it's a loose term. To, it's a loose way of term, term, terming it. But it's in the council's contingency. Yeah. It's not as if it's an operating expense that we are going to be committed to forever. It's a contingency. It, it's council. a line item in the council budget. We do have a separate line item for contingency. So that's a little bit different. But it is a line item in the council budget. And if we didn't use it, it goes back to the general fund at the end of the year. Let's face it, we have had a lot of issues over the last four months, five months, yeah, with lawsuits. You know, we, we don't know if we're going to need that. Okay, six times more money than what we spent the past five years. Can I go back to um, the 327 and the revenue portion of it? Yes. Um, can you explain to me again why we would want to reduce revenues? I mean, doesn't council have the option of just cutting the expense? So they do have that option. Yeah. But what I would, what I was explaining at the beginning of, of the meeting is, is that that 327 is being generated by one-time capital. So if if we're looking to avoid structural or operate increases in operating costs this is literally cutting a capital number so shouldn't we cut the usage of the fund balance that created that capital number I see. Mm -hmm. so again i'm going back to the concept of if we're cutting cip which is cutting capital projects the use of fund balance is only being used for for capital projects and that would have to come as a recommendation from the county executive. Correct. Yeah. Which I, she is in agreement with all those changes. So I know that would not be an issue associated. She's in agreement with reducing the amount we borrow and, and giving the Board of Education their fifth project in their priority list. The council can certainly take the 327 and add it to their number to come up with that 1% that you're looking for. Yes, but you're switching it from a capital concept to sure. an operating. Yes. So again, you're taking money that we had allocated for capital and now spending it on an operating cost, which is what I heard at the beginning you weren't interested in really doing. 
cost. Yes, per, and that would be yeah. a recurring cost. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that concept out. Um, is there um, is there any uh, interest from the council members um, to take this make this adjustment for that three twenty seven? <clears throat> where, where is this in the budget exactly? So it's contingency, it's but it's related to the board of ed. So it's oh. uh, department forty six, and it's the transfers to capital projects would be reduced by three twenty seven. And then the two options are either reduce revenue to balance that off or council um, reallocate it. I think it's an awful long, many, many, many trips around the tree in order to try to get a 327. It sounds, I mean, it sounds like a terribly convoluted mess to try to make those numerous adjustments. Is that correct or not? I think it's the appropriate adjustments because it saves us uh, millions of dollars in bonding. Because again, we make all of those changes, we're reducing the amount we use in fund balance, reducing the amount we borrow, and we're giving them a fifth capital project. So they are getting one more project for less money. I, th I think those are appropriate changes to make because again, it saves us money. And they and requested the, those changes too. That came from the board of ed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the recommendation. Yes. I don't think we would return it. I don't think we would turn it down, right? Everybody's okay with this? Yeah. Okay. Now, where do you want the 327? Do you want it to reduce revenue as a recommendation from the county executive to reduce revenue to offset, or do you want that 327 to be reallocated by you guys? We need to I like Joe, Joe's idea. He said, look for one more percent. I think we need to see what other cuts may be uh, on the table in discussion right now. We'll put this on hold for a second. I think everybody's in favor of it. Mm -hmm. And it would be a last resort if we were to want to use it as a uh, operating expense. Okay. Joe, you have anything else you want to? Well, do you want to look at the Board of Ed? Sure. I know we've, um, from their presentation, um, I think we're all in agreement that we want to fund for more um, SROs. SROs. Right. But they're also getting a $1.3 million increase, correct? Yeah. That is so what they're asking for, that's is yes. That's what they're asking for. Um, I Inc think which Laura, includes the SROs. Pardon me, that's including the SROs. The SROs yeah. are 250000 yeah, 250000 So say the $1 million, um, <clears throat> you know, I think Laura sent an email asking what this is going to be spent on. You never did get a response, did you? No, I did. She did respond. Oh, she she did. Did. I gave you that mm -hmm. um, documentation. There's, uh, John actually um, held it up somewhere. earlier. When we first started talking about Board of yeah. Ed, it's a one-page sheet that shows. He's got it in front of him. Yeah. Uh, the million dollars. Yes. Yep. Okay. And that was also in their presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do we want to go a million over maintenance effort, effort or not? I mean, I know everybody's got expenses, expense, more expenses. You know, every department does, but not every department in our county is getting more money to pay for expenses. <sighs> Yeah. As a refresher, I'll, I'll go through the list um, of what they were looking at in their description. Um, increases in utility expenses for electricity was two hundred fifty thousand. Insurance forty four thousand. Insurance for general liability twenty one point eight seven thousand. Repair on buses and vehicles was a hundred thousand. Bus fuel and supplies with the increases of fuel and supplies. Uh, was 214.4 thousand. Operations and maintenance instruction increase in material costs was 300 thousand. Consultant uh, increasing in security consulting and penetration testing. I'm not sure what that is. 21 thousand. It's not a lot. Vehicle repairs were minimal. Vehicle fuel was 71 thousand. Bus field trip was 34, and the um, additional resource officers was 250 thousand. Should we make, does everyone have this? Should we make copies for everyone? Got it. Can, it, it was in their presentation, but I can make right. copies. Joe, do you need, Jeff, do you need a copy of it? I got it. Oh, no, it's not in there. Josh, you have it, right? 
Well, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it's it, it's a it's a number. Do we want to go over a million dollars in maintenance of effort or not? I mean, they're paying for this stuff anyway. And from what I hear from some of the teachers and some of the staff, there's a lot of yeah. a lot of things going on at the Board of Education. Money-wise, it's wasted. So they take the keys out of some of their buses. Maybe they could keep better track of them. I guess maybe and some a of the quick... reading material they're buying is not the um, not the best either. So, um, what was the number that we were trying to reach for the uh, five eighty-six? So if you uh, again five eighty-six is two percent plus the and you're at 706. Yeah. 3% would be 750 plus 85. So you would need- uh, So we're already well beyond 2%. You That's would need 835 right. to get to 3%. Right. Two and a half An additional 3%. An additional 3%. An additional so, 3%. Um, if you did an additional 2.5%, you're looking at, at 625 there. plus 85 you're basically there. Yeah. We're at seven, you need 710 and you're at 706. Seven right. So you so could do seven and a half, two and a half percent with the two cuts that you've already made. So close, we might as well try to hit 6%. But this doesn't include the 85 that you need for health insurance. Yes, it does. It does, yeah. okay. Yeah, right. yeah so I need 85,373 for health insurance and we're at 706, 422 in cuts right now, not counting the CIP 327. That's, I'm, I put that one to the side at the moment. So 706, again, it was an estimate of 250. Good. So 250 times 2.5% is 625 plus 85,373, which is an exact number based on current employees. Would help if I could add. Plus two fifty. I sometimes I six twenty five plus eighty five three seventy three. You're at seven ten three seventy three. We're at seven oh six four twenty two. Now you could say, Pam, when you're figuring out the exact dollar amount, the amount of the revenue cut is only the amount that you need to balance out the difference because you have 327 available and then the rest could be revenue cut and you wouldn't have to cut anything else <clears throat> and we could get two and a half percent and health insurance thank you for that joe um i guess your question is what the council how the council feels comfortable in a 1.3 um increase of maintenance of effort right which is a reoccurring. We know, we know we want the we know we want the 250 for the for the um, SROs. Now okay. the other part the other part of that is we talked about whether to put the 250 for the SROs in co contingency. Yeah. In that anticipation of them hiring the SROs, right. I mean, because the superintendent made the comment that if we give them that money they might use it for something else if they couldn't hire the SROs. And we know that then the reason for giving them the money is to do SROs, correct? Mm -hmm. So well, they can shift these dollars however, around however they yeah. choose to. Right. Well, that, that just told me that, you know, this, this list, this is bills are paying anyway. And I mean, so yeah, they're gonna have increases. Everybody's got increases. Every department in Wacomico County's got increases in electric increases in employees and a lot of them don't have um, not not employees but other items and a lot of them don't have increases in their budget in this county right. so i mean you know it all boils down do we want to give them a million dollars over maintenance effort or not 1.3 i'd like to add just a little something sure um, james the uh losa was four hundred thousand, and that was non-reoccurring right that's no, it was reoccurring. Okay, so it was in the budget. It was going to happen. Okay, I was going to say that. If LOSA that. was created, it would have been a reoccurring cost at $400,000 every year. Okay, yeah, that was just. Starting at 400000 not starting counting what we'll give. Yeah. Up. Yes. I was just going to say that would be something to think about. If it wasn't, then we would have to think about what other reoccurring costs no, for next a, year. It was a reoccurring number. Okay. And it was, again, same with the Tri-County. The 306, if we had put it in, it would have been something then that they would have wanted in the future. Additionally, 
you have to understand that both of those were funded out of reoccurring revenue, not funded out of fund balance. So again, I was those two are both reoccurring cuts. And the, the 1.3 above mates of effort is a recurring expense. Yes. Okay, so I have a, one question on that. Uh, Mr. Holloway recommended maybe um, putting 250 into contingency. If we did that, does that then um, obligate us to going above maintenance of effort? So if we move, like we did this year, mm -hmm. we moved money out of their number down to contingency. Now this year we had a very specific ability to put it back into a non-recurring line. Right. If count if we are able to hire the SROs and we put it back into their budget, it becomes a recurring line and becomes an increase to maintenance of effort for next year. I was just wondering because we always sign an annual certification as to what their budget is. If it's so, not included in that annual certification. But, but if we that's kind of a hair. <laughs> Okay. If we if we put it back in to their budget, it would be being put back in to their recurring line. I don't think an earmarking a earmarking a cut is what we're looking to do on that. So last year we very specifically moved money out of their number and knew if we ever put it back in, it was going to be put back in as a non-recurring item. This year, if we put it back in, it would be a recurring item. But the thing of it is, if we, if John, you just, uh, I, I'm not sure. What did you, did you just say? What I was trying to say is uh, you're either going to make a cut or you're not. If you're concerned about maintenance of effort and the amount being too high, um, tra transferring it to contingency where it may come back, you're not, you're not solving that problem. We're talking about just the SROs. Yeah, I don't think you need to worry about whether it's an SRO or whether it's a fuel for the buses. It's whether or not whether you want to cut it. If you say you want to cut it, you want to say it's the SROs. You're crazy. But we want. Wait a minute. We want the guarantee that they hire SROs. But well, they can still do that. You could still cut them two hundred. Not if they've already spent it on something else. No, no, no. What I'm what I'm saying is that you could if it's if it's one point three. If you want to cut it to one million, right? Um, you could just do that, and with the inf with the insistence that the part of the one million would have to go to RSOs. Two hundred fifty thousand of that one million left. Would have to go to RSOs, and that is our that is our strong request. That wasn't what I had in mind. I was suggesting we. Do you want to go over a million? Do you want to do the million dollars over us maintenance of effort? That's my question. Yeah, right. Exactly. If you uh, transfer it to contingency, to you are not going to accomplish that. Yeah, I'm not talking about putting the million dollars in contingency. No. Okay. If you want to transfer the two hundred fifty thousand to contingency, mm -hmm. you're not going to accomplish that because. There's a pretty good chance I'm saying, and in, in that within the next year, it's going to be transferred back, and they're going to hire the RSOs. I really think that's going to happen. So that's not going to accomplish your goal. But John, our sheriff sit here and said that we're having trouble. Hunting. Let's just say not. I'm, what I'm trying to say, Joe, is yeah. if you you have to make a decision as to whether you're going to make it something that's going to be effective or not. You it, and it doesn't matter how you define the the cut. You can define the cut for anything you want. And say we just think 1.3 is too much. Make it one. And do not lose the RSOs. You're not, you're not making a cut if you just go three three hundred thousand out of a million three. That's not a cut. That's, I mean, a that's different... not much of a cut, you know. Well, you're talking I mean, two fifty for the RSOs. Yeah. So I don't know what you're trying. What are you suggesting? I'm cutting? suggesting we leave the two fifty in for the SROs and cut the million. Oh, I didn't get that part. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get that at all. Well, I, that, okay. That's the question I put out to the council. Do you want to go a million dollars over maintenance of effort? Okay, but. All right, well, that's, anybody else? I, I would entertain going under a million, uh, like what Joe said, um, just because, I mean, yeah, they do have a lot of waste, and, I mean, we've got to go to the drawing board multiple times. They, maybe they can go back to the drawing board, too, and come back later if they really need more money. What's the number? Joe says a million. It's 1.3 million. No, Joe's so saying I, he if wants If I understand Joe correctly, oh. he wants to cut to... He wants to cut a million dollars. Cut the whole. Th wait, uh, you're saying you want to cut the whole thing and put 250 in contingency? Well, you're saying you don't want to do that. So we'll give them the 300, the, anything over a million, which would be 300,000. That's our. So if we cut the 300,000. No, he wants no. to cut. No. A, he wants to cut a million. He wants to cut all but 300,000. He wants to cut everything right? Right. but. That's um, correct. He wants to. Yeah. 300. He wants. It's right now. It's one point. It's one million three hundred thirteen six ninety four. Yeah. He wants to make it. 
And if we did 300,000 period, do we have the, and the, what guarantee do we have that that goes to the SROs? Um, I can't make any assurances on that, but for the most part, as, as I really feel with the board of education, if you were to stress that that money is for the RSOs, they're not going to take, they're not going to back off on that. I mean, they, they've been pretty honorable with every, every, um, given them. We did a one time only a few years ago and they did apply it towards the computers as we requested. They're all stuck in a closet and not being used. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I got, that's what the guy put okay. the pictures of. They're not used. The, the, um, what were they called? The laptop desk or something like that? Yeah, carts. Carts, laptop mm -hmm. carts. Yeah, yeah, they're not using them after we bought them. But anyway. And not that it needs to be said, but obviously, I, you know, I'm never a fan of the race to the bottom conversation of cutting to the Board of Education. Obviously, we are, um, you know, we're about, was it were our neighboring county of Worcester spends five times, nearly five times what we do right. locally allocated. You know, they're literally 14,638 per pupil. We're worth 3,292. $3 million from the board down there. They didn't give them a, th they, they wanted 3 million over maintenance of effort and the board in Worcester County said no. We'll make that up in marijuana funding next year. Yeah. But I will say, yep. you know, if we were to be our per pupil versus our county revenue, uh, you know, it, we're about $1,800 lower than where we were in 2008 as a proportion of revenue. So, I mean, we're still the second lowest locally funded in the state, which is just embarrassing to right. beyond, you know. So, we need to start to invest into it. I say keep it, obviously. I don't, I don't, I feel, I feel strongly that the Board of Ed does a good job as a whole with allocating their money. And they're pretty clear on where, you know, they, they, they could have requested more in the past from us. They've chosen not to do so. We need to put more money into a broader array of how, how much money goes per people funding, including things like safety and all that. So, um. so, so we've got two suggestions. I'll make a suggestion. Okay. I say above maintenance, above maintenance of effort, give them a million. Mm -hmm. Take the 300,000. Add back into the budget. We're covered on the six percent raises. We're covered on the insurance. Okay, so we have two. We have one. You have three. You have three options. We have one no who's change. saying no, do nothing at all. We have one saying uh, cut it by a million, and another one saying cut it by about three hundred. Right. So I guess you have to. Third. Council, would you would you would you meet Shane in the middle somewhere? No. <laughs> no. So his, his who, suggestion is cutting 313, not 694. Who would want to cut the million, Jeff? Oh, cut the whole million now. Uh-huh. Jane. Cut the whole million now. Yeah, okay. Josh is a no. James. Yeah, I would, you know, a million is quite a lot of money. I, I, I wouldn't say the whole million, maybe maybe half of what they're asking for, I would say cut. So right, four so suggestions on the table. James, James is about. I think. Um, I think keeping the entire, keeping all that. I don't see where the council's in favor of that. Except for Josh. I'm Except for Josh. I'm I'll sorry. be glad to take a poll. I'm as, as, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want a poll? Yeah. You want a consensus? I trust you all. That's okay. Uh, James is saying somewhere in the middle, and uh, and uh, Shane is suggesting uh, taking out 300. Correct. Yep. One so take out 300. And that takes care of everything that we're trying to accomplish. Okay. So the op, the uh, the the um, alter, the two uh, options would be either putting giving them a million over maintenance of effort, or what would your number be? It would be around seven hundred. Seven hundred. So it's either going to be a million or seven hundred. Anybody have any input on that? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. that's, I think that's you where we are the, right now. I think now. you vote on the options that you've got. <laughs> uh, no, what to do with the other three hundred thousand? Oh, well, right now we're just looking at as whether or not to the taxpayers, Jeff. We're looking as to what right now whether or not we're going to change this number to you a million seven, or seven hundred thousand. I was going to say you mean seven hundred thousand, Jeff. <laughs> that's the option. Are we, you know, are there any preferences as to seven or a million? You guys want to just say seven or a million? I, that would help me. One. One million. One. Joe, you're not, yeah. Okay, Josh. Not in favor. Excuse me? Not in favor of any cut. All right. Um, and James is for seven. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, um, I would say the million. Um, you want to cut a million, John? 
that no, I, I'd say I'd like <laughs> to leave it. At the, I'd like to leave it at the million. They're going to keep the million. Mm -hmm. Yes. So okay. it would be a Just cut. Wondering. It would be a cut of three hundred thirteen thousand six eighty four. Yeah. We don't. We don't have an, a consensus on that. No. Of who's it, of of the quorum we have in the room? Yes. You've got fifty fifty. No, we have one, one abstention and two objections. I'll object. Hmm? I'll object to the, to the million. If, if the question is to cut or to keep only a million and or cut the point the three hundred thousand, then yes, I am. Well, the, the, the question was whether or not we went to seven hundred thousand or whether we went to a million. Whether we cut five hundred thousand or they only cut three hundred thousand. This is when I get to be like Joe Holloway and say no to everything. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> or Shaney when you need her. Just remember, remember what Johnny Mount said out there. You got to remember. I mean, we're all sitting up here, and I know we're having a good time doing this, and we're working well together. But I remember, I re Shane was on furloughs when he was working at the sheriff's department. I remember us doing furloughs right. here. I remember us reducing pay. I remember the sheriff's department. You weren't in finance director that year, I don't think. That was, I was a, with the count. I was with the city when we had to do furloughs. And then the sheriff's department took a big pay cut. You know, if we're if we're talk, if, if 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 you're watching if you're watching the news, if you're watching what's going on on the federal level, if you're listening to what our state delegates are saying. Right. We need to be careful, and we're not being. But if we don't come to a consensus, it's going to be 1.3. <clears throat> okay. Right. So I'd like to change mine and go with Joe. Uh, with just cut a million versus keep a million. Just Let's change the vote. No, it doesn't. But it changes my my vote. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Go ahead. I just think it's important to add for context too. It's about getting us to the locally funded amount up. Because when we get to this point, as uh, Joe was uh, saying, I wholeheartedly agree, it's likely going to happen. You know, then we're going to have to make up a whole lot larger of a gap because we're not going to have the state Maryland coming in to fill the gap. That's the only reason why this we're even being allowed to even have the conversation. So we need to, one way or another, we've got to raise our amount up because when when things go badly, which they will undoubtedly question of how bad we are then going to have to work a whole lot harder to find money elsewhere if we don't start lifting up the amount that we're you know well, the only thing I can say is right now we have three members here that are looking to and I get all of what you're saying it's important for I, I get yeah. both extremes I get both extremes but right now we have three people who are saying well let's let's leave it at a million um, if we don't come up with a majority because we're not going to get a majority on a full cut well isn't that a majority right there three like, well, we can't well, as it is right now, uh, Josh says he's saying no, he doesn't agree to that million dollar cut, cut to a million. So right now, that's where we are. Either we go, either we have another vote for the million, or um, it's going to stay at 1.3. It depends on what party you're with, whether two votes out, do five, whether it's a majority or not, right? Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> just a little input in on it. I think we're accomplishing several things by giving them the million and taking back the 300,000. It allows us to do what many members of this council set out to do anyway, is to give the county employees good raises, especially after the years of inflation, cost of gasoline, cost of food, things are increasing. I mean, I think it, I think it was terrible to do a 3% increase for the county employees mm -hmm. and I, I just I couldn't get with that at all and I, I'm doing the best I can and I've gone along with that and you have everybody, and anybody that knows me knows that I'm when it comes to those kind of things I'm pretty conservative on yeah, so, you have. okay but this you know I mean I've seen enough over the years and I've also remember the Great Recession and I you know, if that's what they wanted to call it uh, and and how this council was ringing. We're not wringing our hands here over what to do other than some conversations. This is an easy one compared to some budgets that we've gone through. I mean, you know, when we were talking about what we were doing back 
06, 07, 08, 07, well, I guess it was 07 or 08. That was, that was bad. I mean, and for those exact reasons is why I have a problem using money out of our savings. And that's what I have been saying. No. All right. This is a recurring cost, though. The savings is like the one time funding. So this is going to be something we're going to have to spend next year and year after next. And, and it'll probably be more next year. So it represents about a 1.7% increase in there in what we. Right. And we only increase, what, 2% a year from the revenue? This is a 1.7% increase oh, okay. to the Board yeah. of Education yeah, budget. Okay. This, this million dollars right. would be about a 1.7% mm -hmm. increase to their budget. All right, I'm going to shut it down with the, where it stays at 1.3 if we can't come up with another consensus because that's where we're at a uh, jog, uh, log jam. Wow. Uh-oh, on the fence. Well, I, I, don't want, I don't want it to go to 1.3, but, you know, like a million is better than 1.3. Looking at the list that we were provided of what that money is going to be used for and having a fairly good working knowledge of right. the world of business and rising costs and all the challenges that everybody's facing today. I, I think every one of those expenses is justified. Um, I don't like it any more than anybody else. Um, but the fact of the matter is costs are rising and they're probably going to keep rising. Um, you know, we talked about putting off projects because we want to save money. Well, how, how much more is it going to cost five years from now when we do this project? So we need to think about that. Um, I, and maybe not the whole 1.3, but I think the million's justified. We definitely need school resource officers. I, I hate the fact that we're having that conversation too, because when I went to school, we didn't know what a school resource officer was, but Society's changed, times have changed. We have to learn to work in the world that we're in right now. And, uh, you know, I, I get your point about recessions. You know, I, I went through it. it. It was not a fun time. Um, we learned a lot of lessons on, on um, having money stocked away. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I, I get that. Well, every. Every department in Wacomico County is facing the same challenges at the board, yeah. and a lot of them are getting hardly any increases. Yeah. So, do we look at it like that? Yeah. So, anybody want to go 750? 750. That includes the resource officers. Got to include the resource officers. Oh, that's what I'm that saying. Includes that, that includes the resource officers. That includes the resource officers. And and two of them are grant funded, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they yeah. they would get um, at 750 if you you would stipulate that they have to hire the five, three of them coming from the additional money that we're giving them, plus two from grant. So that would mean they would get a half a million plus the 250 oh, for this. Pardon me. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I'm going to join Joe on the 750 if I can get somebody else to get a little closer. Yep. I still like that million number. Yeah, I'm, I'm at I'm at the million. I, the, you know, with the SROs and increasing cost, you know, I, I think I think a million's justified. Still would. Um. We want to try to get this budget done by the first meeting in June, no matter what. This would have to be a discussion by June on the first meeting in June. I mean, we would ideally like to know before that meeting. I so that way we can prepare. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. I can't. I I will tell you right now, the first mm -hmm. meeting of June. If you want to put it back into pay raises, I can't make it happen for the first meeting of June without knowing about it within the next several days. I, it it is. Because of every line that I have to touch in this budget to make the, this thing balance, I need this information with at least a week. We've got five minutes left. Yes. We're going to get this done. So let's just say if we cut it to 750 and the Board of Ed says, hey, look, you know, six months down the road, I really need, we really need $200,000. Could we do something and maybe 
have to take it out of contingency right. or take it out of fund balance right. at that so point. So we could put that extra money in contingency and say, you know, if you need it, we have it, but we're not just going to we're not just going to give it to you right away. Yeah, we, so we, I'd say we let's let's uh let's look at eight. I want to get off the table. Eight hundred. Mm-hmm. You guys want to do? Um, I'll, 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 I can do I can do eight hundred thousand okay. just right. to get That's, it get it done. Okay, so if I understand correctly, just so I know, one three one three six ninety four. You only want to increase them by eight hundred thousand dollars. So that's five hundred and thirteen thousand. 694 in reductions to Board of Education uh, maintenance of effort number. So that comes to a total of recurring cost reductions of 706, 422 plus 513, 694. You're at 1,220,116 plus an additional $327,000 of possible reduction in revenue. And then 3% additional would be 750 plus the 85373 for health insurance that's 835. Um 835373 approximately. I will tell you that what I will have to do is line by line and person by person, and I will propose what that number becomes with the FICA increases and with the um, other increases, and that then become the difference then of approximately four hundred thousand dollars. Put that in contingency. What I, that becomes and goes into contingency. What I would like to see on that: those that were going to get more than three percent. This doesn't mean since no. people are getting six percent that they're going to get even more. No, this would only be those that are in those categories that are thirty-three and above. So thirty-one and thirty-two, we're getting thirteen and a half and seven point nine. Those people would not change. The, the people are making less than fifteen dollars an hour, and just above them, so we could tackle compression. So, the, it would be those who were only getting three percent would now be getting six percent. If you've got a guy now, let's say that's getting 5% right now, he's just going to go to 6%. He's not going to go more than 6% because he was getting more than the three. Okay. Is that our goal? Is that our goal is 4%, um, 5%, or 6%? 6%, right? I, you, can cover, 6%. you can cover 6% with the reductions and still reduce the use of fund balance. What about retirees? Retirees are, you literally have to go in and change the pension plan. And so that is meeting with Smith and Downey again, paying them, rewriting the pension plan for an increase because we have a, what's called a defined benefit plan. It is defined based on your current salary. There's no, cult, there's no cost of living adjustment built into that. So. My understanding from talking with HR um, is that back in the early years of Rick Pollitt, he did a 1% increase and it was to get it adjusted. It's not just 1% because it's not just the cost of doing it for one year. It's the cost of then the actuarial calculation for increasing all those people for, that, for the rest of their time. So it's not as simple as saying we want to give 1%. It's not we paid out over $5 million last year out of the pension plan. So it's not as simple as saying, oh, we'll just add $50,000. No, we have to add $50,000 for one year, and then you have to do the actuarial calculation of what 1% costs to make sure you're not reducing your funding level of the pension. And to accomplish it, you have to amend the pension. But sticking people with not having had an increase, if I'm right, maybe since 2017, you've really abandoned uh, 
past employees of this county. I think we've sort of abandoned the retirees, not on purpose. I just think it's been overlooked, and I think so, we really need to reconsider it at some point in time. I don't think we can do it this year, right? So it, it cannot be accomplished in time yes. for this fiscal year. Right. No, serious no, thoughts for next year, though. I think the retirees, we have to look at something so, in that direction. I, we, would need, <laughs> we would need authority and funding to be able to, it is not in the scope of our actuarial calc, uh, time every year to work with our actuaries to come up what would a cost of living adjustment cost us in the pension. Right. Um, you have four hundred thousand dollars. If you want to say put fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars in, or have it all go into contingency and we come back to you, but and here is what it's going to cost us to look at the pension again and, and to develop a plan where we don't have to revisit it every five years. Something that we can come up with. It's well, I mean, that is going again. That is a costly concept because and, and you have, you're anticipating how much 50,000 I would say it's probably between 50 and a hundred thousand dollars if we really want the pension to have a cola concept in it mm -hmm. between meeting with the actuaries and meeting with the pension people you I mean pension attorneys I get it they're expensive but I think I, I think I think that I want to be a pension attorney <laughs> no I don't <laughs> I think it's important and we shouldn't delay it. And I think it is something we should be looking at in fiscal year 24. Okay. I mean, if count, if council's suggestion is, is then you take some of the $400,000 and put it into HR to look at the pension for future years. What do you think? I can't vote on it because it affects me. I can't speak. Joe? I can't speak upon it. Uh, Joe? Josh? I'm not quite sure enough to know enough to be able to say. It's, it's making an effort to try to move the county forward to addressing the concerns that the retirees haven't had an increase in five years, and it could go on forever. At some point in time, we have to do some type of, I'd say, study, for lack of a better word, to okay. evaluate how to make a change. So I'd, I'd, I'd be okay with that as long as we're, f f pardon me, I'd rather before we're looking at future funds, that kind of situation, just having a defined benefit plan makes it a little harder to do so. Definitely agree that there's issues there. Also agree that individuals should be able to make sure that they manage their own money. So individuals who are retirees should also be planning to do that. Um, so I kind of feel like we're stepping into an area that we really sh well, could I be mean, a little challenging. So here. I will say and we have to that one it. of the knocks against us having a pension on our own is that our pension, even though it's defined benefit, does not include a COLA concept. That is one of the knocks for us not having a different version of a pension. Um, again, we're a government, and so we still have a pension. Um, a lot of places do not have pensions. Sure. So again, there is that other side of it is that, hey, um, we're still offering that benefit to our employees, and that's a benefit that um, a lot of employers do not still offer. And it's mandatory for employees to participate in that. Yes. There is no ability to opt out of our pension plan. Well, I would say it wouldn't hurt to at least suggest that we, we set the, the money aside. Uh, we certainly know that the administration is going to come before the council before any of that money is spent with at least a, some type of a synopsis as to if there will be any benefit to move forward at all. So any changes to a pension plan would have to come before council. Yeah. Right, but I mean, even the idea of, of going out and hiring a consultant or, or the pension so attorney, you, I, I would hope that the, the administration would come to the council and go, hey, you put aside, let's say, 100000 for this. We just want you to know it may be 150. It's only going to be 50, and here's what we are attempting to accomplish. And um, inform, but you would not... We're not approving it now. We're just saying we want to set the, the set it aside so they can be given serious consideration. So the way our contract structure works with purchasing and that kind of stuff, if you fund it in the the HR budget, right. we have the ability to go forward with it. If you just put it in contingency, then we have to come back to you for a budget amendment. You did say they've done it in the past. They've given raises before. 
the very first year I think Rick Pollitt was around, they they. Um, 2017, I think was the last one. I'm not sure it was even done that year. Okay. I think it goes all the way back to like the first year of Rick being. 2007. So it. Maybe it's 2007. You might be right, Joe. Yeah. So um, again, yes. it is. Yeah. Um, if the concept is a one-time thing, I'm not sure that's a concept that's worth the cost to amend the, the thing, the pension. If the concept is, is you want us to look at our pension and how much it would cost to add a COLA concept to the pension, because you're going to spend about... That would be astronomical to yes. have a COLA. Yes, it would be. But a one-time thing is only going to help those who have retired right now. I, th I think what the, he wants to add is the language that would allow a discretionary COLA. So this year we can afford it, next year we can't. Not an automatic COLA every year, right? No, no, no. I, I just find it absolutely amazing that if we even want to consider this, we've got to spend $100,000. It shouldn't be that hard. It should be a different project process where it's much easier for any government to be able to make a change if they have to. And I think you're 100% correct. We, I don't think we need to obligate it towards HR. Contingency is fine. Just give it some thought. Let me come back to us if it's warranted. Okay. That's a good suggestion. It's kind of like right. how the 457 works. They give 20% a year, but it's, I think it's worded if we can afford it, if correct. we can do it. And I will say that is an incredible benefit. Incredible. People it's an, don't realize just how they, important it they, is. They, my husband working for the federal government gets um, half of 6%. There are many counties around here that give nothing. And so the fact that and we're cities. willing that we as a county match up to, up to 20% of whatever you put in, that's an incredible is benefit. That, is, that, is there a limit to whatever? 20% is the map no there's no limit so what I, well there's there's the federal limit as to how much you're allowed to put into a 457 plan but there's no limit as to um we will match up to the federal limit so but i mean my concern was my concern was going back to the retirees who are already retired and the correction of the 2000 from since 2007 having had no changes um uh, is your perception that it's not warranted to consider that or not? I'm not trying to. Oh, no, what I'm what I'm saying is, is that if our pension plan is not changed, whatever year you retire, mm. the value of your money is based on the salary of the year you retired. Mm. So if you retired in 2008, right. your pension is built on 2008 salaries. Right. If you retired in 2015, it's based on 2015 salaries. It, I don't think it hurts us to look into the concept of a discretionary COLA mm -hmm. in the pension plan to allow the ability in years of, um, to be able to possibly give our retirees an increase. I get it too, because but you have to be very, very, very careful with that. So that's why I'm ongoing. saying it's in perpetuity, and, and that's why I'm saying is is that. But whatever you, it, so let's say we gave a cola this year, and we had the pension plan that would allow it. That one percent would be built in for the foregoing future. Right. Next year, if we felt that we didn't have the funding available, but we had written our pension plan in such a way that allowed a discretionary cola. Right. Then we wouldn't have to offer it. And, you know, I, I am not familiar with how generous the prior plans may have been. You know, I, I'm not. I'm just, you know. So our, our plan does not have the ability to grow. You are stuck at what, you are set at whatever number you retired at, at whatever right. year you retired. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So can I just do a quick summary to make sure that I know what I'm supposed to be trying to do? Before you do that, um, so is that what council agreed to? The hundred thousand to be put in I think contingency? He, he, no, I, I think we're just going to. I just, it doesn't matter what what we do with that. We'll wait for administration to make that decision as to how they may want to come for before us in the future. 
So I think I, I think it all drops. I think the difference between the number drops to contingency anyways. Okay. Well, it doesn't have to go to contingency if you do the whole difference. I mean, someone mentioned reducing fund balance. It can also go to fund balance. That's re that's changing revenue. I mean, it can't no, use of fund. Well, no, I'm, use of fund balance is a revenue. Yes, change. you're right. You're right. <laughs> um, were so there any more? The only way. It can, so, right now, 306. And before you get there, were there any more cuts that were on the table anyone wanted to discuss? I know it's getting late. I have one more thing. Um, yes. I know that in the last couple of days there was discussion about the setup of the Accidental Disability Trust and whether 19000 was included in this fiscal year 24 budget. It is in, fund, in Department 41. What, what is that department? Hospitals and disability. Yes. Okay. So Department 41 has $19,750 in it for disability. That number specifically is related to um, putting that into the Can disability. Can we is there instead of in the Sheriff's Department? It has um, the disability in the sheriff's department is the short term disability that all departments pay. So every department, your department, every department has a disability line. This was separating it out because it was very different. And it, it, that's the historical place so that um, I'll be honest. Until just recently, I didn't realize I had to figure out what that was. But that 19,750 relates to that. And okay. so if you put it in the sheriff's department, it would get lost with the regular disability payment. Because it was in prior budgets in the sheriff's department. No, it's always been in here. Um, I Even though they are pointing it out as being, there is a disability line in the right. sheriff's department. That number was always paying the short-term disability funding for our short-term disability that every employee gets. 19000 It happened to be... I can go back into Munis and see <laughs> yeah. that this is in this Department 41 since we funded the original $900,000 and the continual payments into it has been in Department 41. It has not come out of the Sheriff's Department. Okay. Was it in there last two years? It has been in there. Yes. So it was in there the last two years? Yes. All right. We oh. were, we're under the impression that it had not been put in there in the last two years. It's it's been budgeted for the last two years. I can say that since I did not know about this because it wasn't in any collective bargaining agreement, it hasn't been paid for the last two years. Okay. It has been budgeted since it first went in in 2015. $900,000 went in 2015. There's been budgets ever since in this line item. Up through 2019, payments were made out of this line item. 2020 forward, it has not yet been paid. I can't pay 2021 and 22. Those budgets are closed. 23 could be paid still because that budget is available. Okay. Thank you very much. I just have one thing, and it's uh, just a request. Um, code enforcement officer is, I think that line item was cut a little bit, and uh, I just took a, a ride around District 1, and it, it looks like they they, in my opinion, I think they need one, uh, uh, maybe more help in that department um, area. And I just, I just wanted to bring that to light, Funky, and uh, you guys figure out what you can do with that later. And um, yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, did you, you need to do a total? Okay. So I, Tri County three hundred six and change, Losa four hundred, Board of Education five thirteen six ninety four. Mm -hmm. That adds up to 1,220,116. Approximately $835,000 would be used for adding 3% to get those who are not currently making more than 3% up to 6% and the health insurance. So then there's about a $400,000 difference. It's gonna be plus or minus some money. Um, that 400,000 would drop to contingency. Um, and then there's also the $325,000. My recommendation for that, because it's capital, is 
that the, the executive requests that you cut the revenue by $327,000 for the CIP. Everybody good? Would, 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 would be able to throw a recommendation in there for co code, in, code, uh, code enforcement at all? So Just, I, I'll be honest, I think it's cleanest if we do this budget and I know there is, um, planning and zoning has requested to meet with executive and if we want to look at a change, it would be cleanest to come back to council after the budget is adopted. Uh, and we reached our, our I emailed um, Councilwoman Shields and and pledged that uh, myself and Lori Carter, planning and zoning director, would sit down with her and talk both about the code, you know, and the position. But Paul Wilbur actually pulled up the code, and we have the ability right now to find repeat offenders. Um, so um, I have not talked to Councilwoman Shields. However, uh, Lori did, so so she's aware of that. So um, the other thing to keep in mind, and it's something Keith said. There's sort of two different models. The city's model and is more, uh, I don't know the other word, I wanna be tactful, but more punitive. You know, they go after people where ours is really complaint driven. And of course, where there's density, people are gonna see a lot more if your grass is eight inches versus if you're, you know, on Jesterville Road or, or you know, somewhere out in the county. So um, I, I don't, think it would be appropriate for our county to be in the same stance as the city is on code enforcement. However, I, I recognize right. that there are I, certainly I was just issues. pointing out because some of the areas in her district are, it's really mixed between city and county. And I guess, you know, if it's complaint driven, then no one, no one knows to complain. Then, then. you know, I get calls and I um, call over to the county executive's office and talk to Lisa or AK and you know, they get it with Tony and he usually takes care of it. Now, okay. the reoccurring, I don't know how they're handling that. Right. So, but you know, I, he I just, always shows up anyway yeah. when you call him, so. I, th I think on that note, to be clear though, uh, I think there was, there was said at last time we were talking about this, they said, oh, well, we don't need that because, you know, Tony's doing a great job, he handles this. We are only doing so well because AK Kenny is in the position that she's in and she's so right. darn good at her job. She is extraordinarily efficient, knows these things well. If she were not there, then we would definitely need more people to help uh, understand what's happening, to be able to document, to respond back. It's not just, it's not just one person going out and saying, yeah, there's, that's the problem and that goes against our code. It's the, it's, the, it's the bigger piece of responding to it and all that. So I think we're saving because she's very good at her job specifically. Yeah. I do have one thing. Um, our charter does indicate, Pam, that um, if for some reason the executive and council do not agree on the expenditure of the surplus, then um, the adoption um, of the budget, the surplus shall be placed in the undesignated fund balance. So contingency ultimately drops to undesignated fund balance without council approval to move it out of contingency. It's cleanest. Now, again, I can put it wherever, Having the ability to have, you know, we talked about having the money available for a pension thought. Uh, again, it can go either place. We can reduce, the only way it goes to undesignated fund balance is by reducing revenue. Because the charter allows for that. Okay. For that so specific. Do you, do you want the 400,000 to move to contingency? And the only way it gets out of contingency is we come back to council or it drops to undesignated fund balance at the end of the fiscal year. Or do you want to move it there now? Whatever Ms. Hurley says. <laughs> it's not my decision. What, what, I'm just making it as an option. Both, we, we would take your recommendation. My recommendation is you move it into um, contingency. That's fine. That's, yeah. And that way it's available to council if any request. It, it's a, a cleaner budget amendment to take it out of contingency than a budget amendment that is associated with a, adjusting fund balance later in the year. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thank you for your help, uh, Bonky. Thank you as well. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Second.